What's up guys? Carolina Jackpot time. Checking in. It's Tuesday evening, July the 11th, 2017 in South Carolina. It's hot and muggy. Like two mice humping on a wool sock today. That hot and muggy. At any rate, we need to jump into games five and six in the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks preseason countdown. We've already uh, established that through four games, the Gamecock should be, should be, 4-0. Entering game number five, the uh, first true road test of the season. Now, I say we should be 4-0. I'm going to tell you right now, that don't mean we're going to be 4-0. If we go out and we play deflated, we play half-assed football, we're not going to be 4-0. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I'll go back to the 2013 season real quick. We had a lot of talent on that team uh, on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Uh, the first half of that season, we did not play up to our potential at all. Did not play up to our potential. In fact, there were several games against inferior opponents that we really struggled with. Uh, you know, really close games. Uh, our offense didn't put up the kind of production that they should have. Our defense let some of these teams score too many points and keep the games much closer than they should have been. For instance, North Carolina, UCF. Who went on to have a pretty good season that year, by the way? Kentucky, okay. Vanderbilt. Teams that we should have blown out of the water, uh, they hung around. And that year when we played Tennessee, uh, that type of play finally bit us in the ass. Um, we had a bad road loss against a very inferior Tennessee team. So I'll go back to 2013. Also, when saying this year's team can't afford to make the kind of mistakes that team did. We don't have the depth. We have some talent, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. God almighty, you idiot. Some people should have their goddamn driver's license revoked. So, so, okay. Sorry, let me say that. Damn. Okay. Where was I at? Offensive side of the ball. We got some talent. Uh, it's young. Uh, it's raw, but it is talent. Uh, defensive side of the ball. There's a little bit of talent there, too. But on the 2013 team, you had depth. Uh, on the offensive line, if, if, if one of your offensive linemen was having a bad game, you know, your left tackle, your left guard step up and be like, yo, I got you, bruh. You know, we don't really so much have that right now. Uh, so everybody's got to play balls out, mistake-free or almost mistake-free football in order to go 4-0 in those first four games. But it is entirely possible with that schedule. Anyway, we're getting on to games five and six. Forget about that. Game number five uh, is the first true uh, road test of the season at Texas A&M, Kyle Field, now seating over 100,000 Aggie fans. You know, uh, South Carolina's not had very good luck against Texas A&M. Uh, the first game we played against them, uh, we were favored at home by like nine points on that hot and muggy August 30th, I believe it was, 2014 evening. And uh, we got absolutely taken out behind the woodshed in that game. And things really have never been the same since then in Columbia. Uh, you know, Sandstorm's still playing, but uh, it don't sound like it did before that game, if you, you know what I'm saying. Uh, they really, they really fucked us over good, and uh, by you know, it, it we weren't ready. I mean, I, our defense was not ready, and they exploited a lot of weaknesses. Um, is this year's Texas A&M team as good as that one was? Probably not. Uh, uh, Texas A&M always has speed at receiver. Uh, they always have a lot of height and ability to catch the ball. Uh, I think they're redoing a lot of rebuilding on offense this year. Uh, they got, I think, maybe five returning starters uh, from last year's team. 
breaking in a new quarterback, as is the norm at Texas A&M. Uh, it always seems like they either got somebody transferring out, they got somebody transferring in, or they're breaking in someone you've never heard of. Uh, this year's no different. Uh, it's going to be a battle between the guy that took over for Trevor Knight when he was hurt last year and uh, a couple of true freshmen. Running back wise, I don't know who I, I don't know a lot about Texas A&M to be quite honest with you I don't pay attention to them uh, as I should because we do play them every year it's just uh, you know we normally play them a lot later in the year <laughs> actually we don't I don't know why I just made that statement we don't but anyway I don't know who the running back is uh, that's really not a position they're known for um, Got a little bit of uh, speed returning at wide receiver. Uh, should be a threat there again. Uh, Kevin Sumlin's team's always put up points. Uh, speaking of Kevin Sumlin, uh, he's on the hot seat big time right now. Uh, even on the radio station down here, the Clemson radio station, they were having a uh, top 10 people to replace Kevin Sumlin if and when he gets fired at the end of the season thing the other day and uh, naming off the top 10 people they thought could uh, take the Texas A&M job. That ain't good when uh, people at Clemson are talking about you like that, having them, because I mean, why do they give a fuck, you know? They don't play Texas A&M. I think they do in a couple of years, but, uh, you know, it's kind of irrelevant to them. So, in a national light, he don't look too good. You know, uh, uh, an underachieving coach who, uh, really doesn't have good control of his football team it would appear and always has attrition at the quarterback position and I ain't talking about attrition because they graduated I'm talking about they got I'm gonna out of now for whatever reason so Texas A&M I've always thought was a very uh, overrated program always uh, about the second week of October, people will talk about them going to the playoffs. And by the second week of November, nobody even remembers they're even around because they end up shitting the bed against uh, all the uh, formidable SEC West opponents. That's just what they do. I also think their home field advantage is kind of overrated, that 12th man stuff. I mean, you know, it might have been cool back in the, the uh, Southwest Conference days, but, you know, I mean, really... I think they play better on the road than they do at home. It's not – in the SEC, that's not really that big of a home field advantage because almost every stadium in the SEC is rabid like that, uh, with the exception of maybe Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and, you know, even like the smaller stadiums like Mississippi and Mississippi State, they're like that. I mean, it's, it's nuts, you know, uh, Georgia – Florida, you know, South Carolina, even though we've been kind of down the past few years, Alabama, I'm sure, uh, LSU, oh my God, I mean, these kind of environments exist in Auburn, exist in almost every stadium uh, in the league, so it's really not that big of a deal that you have a passionate fan base, so A&M doesn't impress me, uh, South Carolina has played them tough the past two years. And, in fact, last year we played probably our best defensive game of the year up until that point. Couldn't move the ball to save our soul. In fact, we got most of our yardage on the first play of the damn game. A.J. Turner broke a 75-yard run on play number one. Uh, we scored. And then after that, it was pretty much all she wrote. We lost the game 24-13. to But we were in it. Up until the last minute, I believe Jamarcus King fumbled a punt. I believe it was. Um, or maybe did he drop an interception? He, he fumbled a punt, I think, right there towards the very end. And they uh, kicked a field goal to go up by 11 and put the game out of reach. But, you know, we had every opportunity to beat them, even not being able to move the ball. Uh, had Jake Bentley played that game, I believe we would have beaten them. They had several starters out. If I'm not mistaken, that probably contributed to the close game. The year before that, though, we went to A&M, and we were really down. That was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was that the first game after the old ball sack resigned, quit, whatever he did? It may have been. I know he quit right after the LSU game. I think it was Texas A&M. I think that was uh, 
the first game uh, that he uh, that we didn't have him at the helm and uh, played great, really, uh, offensively. Perry Orth moved the ball against A&M at will. It was a shootout. We should have won that game, too, but uh, we didn't. Didn't have quite enough gas in the old tankaruski. But we played well, uh, and this year I don't look for it to be any different. Do I think that we're going to win that game? No, I don't. I, I think that it's still that they're still a little bit too staunch for us right now. Probably got a little bit more depth than what we do. So I'm going to chalk that one up as a loss. But anything can happen. Do we have every opportunity to win it? Yes, I believe we do. I believe if we can beat NC State, I believe if we, uh, you know, can beat Missouri on the road, I think we can beat Texas A&M on the road. I don't think there's that much difference between those teams, to be quite honest with you. You know, I mean, Texas A&M definitely is better than Missouri, uh, but they're not that much better than NC State, even though NC State plays in the weak SEC, ACC. Moving on to uh, the second game uh, that we're going to talk about here today is the game at home against Arkansas, back in Willie B, playing SEC West Foe, Arkansas, who used to be our cross-divisional opponent every year. Now, we haven't played Arkansas since 2013, and we blew them out. Um, they have uh, Austin Allen returning at quarterback, who's uh, who done some good things there. And Arkansas has had good quarterback play in the past, uh, quarterbacks such as uh, Matt Jones. Uh, Ryan Mallett, just to name a couple. Uh, Mr. Allen is nowhere near the level of those individuals, but he's a pretty good quarterback in his own right. They lost their top returning rusher, Raleigh Williams, the third, to injury that he, uh, I think he sustained in a spring practice or spring game. He's not going to be able to play football again, which kind of sucks for that young man, big time. So they don't have that. Their uh, defense is kind of retooled. I believe they fired their defensive coordinator and uh, got somebody new in there. So look for them to be a little bit stronger on defense. But South Carolina is better than Arkansas. They're always tough, however. They're, they're tough, especially against SEC East teams. Uh, last year, they beat Florida. Florida was in the SEC championship game out of the East, but they lost to Arkansas uh, on the road. So they're formidable. But uh, of those two games, I'm definitely picking that one as the victory. And uh, I would chalk A&M up as the loss. But if we don't play well, that could be a loss as well. I definitely would say that uh, Arkansas is probably a little bit better than NC State. They're definitely better than Missouri, La Tech, or uh, Kentucky. So the SEC schedule is starting to get a little bit meatier now. Starting to get a little bit tougher. Brett Bielema's teams are always tough. They're tough running the ball. I don't know who's going to replace Raleigh Williams, but they'll find someone. They always run the ball at Arkansas. They're always tough up front, uh, tough across both lines, and uh, we've had trouble with that uh, in the past few years against uh, the running game. South Carolina's been very piss poor at tackling the past few years. Very piss poor. Uh, very piss poor tackling in space. That's uh, that's been an issue. Very very piss poor tackling up front. So I guess that's pretty much piss poor tackling all the way around. Uh, we gotta get that together. We gotta get it shored up. Uh, so I'm calling for us to finish up the first half of the season, no worse than four and two. No uh, better, I would think, than five and one. Although an upset is possible, we could be rolling into uh, game number seven undefeated at this point uh if we are five and one which i am predicting i'm predicting in south Carolina to be back in the uh ap top 25 for the first time since uh the uh beginning of the 2014 season yeah yeah after we uh take care of arkansas at home look for south carolina to be ranked about number 21 or 22 how's things going to finish out the rest of the season You'll have to check in with Carolina Jackpot next time for games 7 and 8. I'll see y'all later. Peace, and I'm out. Go Cox. Woo!